this is only 112 miles from Cincinnati so you'll see some orange some black and a little uh, who day that the Bengals fans like to cheer as the game goes on tonight of course Michelle Tafoy and Susie Culver with us on the sideline we'll be hearing from them as our night gets going the Colts 10 and 3 Marvin Lewis's Bengals 8 and 5 and the hot team having won its last four games and Carson Palmer and Chad Johnson will take the field first as Cincinnati has won the toss and will receive I thought the who day thing was for New Orleans who that who that who that who day and who that but it's not Hootie as in Hootie and the blowfish no but we can throw him in there if you want it's who day not who that Correct. I just want to make sure of my who's. Adam Vinatieri to kick. And off we go from Indianapolis. Glenn Holt takes it from the five. And an opening for Holt. Who takes it out to the 40-yard line. Return to 35. And Vinatieri contributed on the tackle. So good field position for Carson Palmer, who 11 months ago was knocked out with that knee injury. And uh, who'd have thunk it that he'd be back and playing at such a high level. And you see the stats. That 98.7 passer rating now leads the National Football League. Just past Drew Brees and his performance yesterday. New Orleans lost to Washington. Opening drive of Monday night starts from their own 41. And a run with Rudy Johnson. The pile pusher gets about six in the NFL in terms of passes caught for the season. Palmer's first throw is complete to Rudy Johnson, who will square forward and get the first down. Rob Morris tried to make the tackle. Otto and Dexter Reed, they are fill-ins, and they are under the gun here tonight. Johnson lost the football, but recovered apparently by the Bengals on the first time around. Let's see as they get to the bottom. It is Cincinnati ball as Rudy, who's very good at protecting it, gave it up there. Chad Johnson got the recovery. Well, what the problem when you look at is it sort of continues for the Indianapolis Colts. They are having a problem stopping the run. The Bengals are averaging five, six yards on first and ten. If that happens, your defense is constantly on his heels. And you see last in the National Football League, in both per run and yards per game, 375 last week against Jacksonville. Rudy Johnson has only lost one fumble his entire career. That would have been a landmark if he lost that. Had a drop against Oakland last week. Second and five. Deep drop, Palmer. First deep throw. Settling in is Chad Johnson at the 22-yard line. Rule the catch and a first down, and Chad is slow to get up on a pickup of 21. Carson Palmer did not get this ball out. If he leads Chad, he's got a shot to go straight up the seam. This ball comes in a little bit low. Chad Johnson goes down, makes the play. He comes up with the reception. And that, this is the difference in the last five games. Chad Johnson being a part of the offense again, Mike. Cincinnati taking a timeout as Johnson came off the field, apparently lost his win for a moment. We'll step out for a second. Cincinnati called the timeout and in the interim Tony Dungy decided to challenge so the Colts are challenging the ruling on the field that this was a reception by Chad Johnson kind of saw it as you went to break and there's the look that Gene Steratore the rookie referee but fourth year NFL official will be checking out under the hood as he does that. Let's check in with Susie Colbert. Sus. Well, Mike, so much for Chad quietly leading the NFL in receiving yards. He showed up tonight wearing these shoes that have depictions of his touchdowns and celebrations sewn in. Well, that didn't last very long because Merton Hanks, who you could call the NFL uniform police, he's a compliance officer with the NFL. Well, he's here and he's a tough one. During warm-ups, they immediately find Chad and they told him, if you don't remove the shoes, we will pull you from the game. Well, after warm-ups, Chad went in the locker room and he did put on his old shoes. But at least they did make it on TV, right? Yeah, he does get the fine. And Susie, if you have somebody to give a Christmas gift to, you have something in your hand there to re-gift. I told him before the game I'd pay the fine if he could wear them. You would. Yeah. <laughs> well, Absolutely. Chad promised something special. If you harken back to this matchup between these teams last year, of course, that was the game where Chad uh, pulled his antics in the wild high-scoring game between Cincinnati and Indianapolis I'm when he sorry. proposed to the cheerleader. He's going to have to do better than those shoes tonight for something special. 
Those shoes aren't exactly going to cut it. They're they're great they're, shoes. Yeah, they're they're. I could see really, you in those. No, I wouldn't. I, wouldn't I could see those. you in those on the golf score. He, the golf he course. made his point. He made his point. He, he's going to get fined, and he had the shoes out, and he got national TV time for a full minute. That's pretty good. And we should point out that Merton Hanks is the same Merton Hanks who was part of the San Francisco championship teams, a very excellent defensive back in his time with the 49ers. There's a second run on those shoes. Aren't they great? No, <laughs> no, they're actually not great. <laughs> they're gaudy. I mean, they're ugly. They're great. Well, that's, oh. I, you know. You know, he is the type of a player. He doesn't hurt anybody. He doesn't he's hurt funny. his team. He's funny. He's, funny. he's fun. He's energetic. He brings life to the game. That doesn't make him Manolo Blahnik, though. Uh, no. Okay. okay. Likeable attention to self. Meantime, the challenge continues on here. Gene Steratore has gone under the hood and looked at it. A challenging if, in fact, that we have a catch by Chad Johnson or not. Cincinnati called the timeout, but Indianapolis could be the beneficiary. After review... The ball does hit the ground. It is an incomplete pass. It will be in the Indianapolis ball. Third down and five. And the White House mark. Indianapolis is not charged with the timeout. That's a good job of reviewing and communicating. You see this ball just sneak through Chad Johnson's hands on his leg down to the ground. Watch where the ball winds up. Goes through his arms. Down, and there it is on the ground right at that point. Even though he brings it up and has control of it. The ball does hit the ground and it is incomplete. Probably holds up as a catch if Cincinnati and Marvin Lewis don't take the timeout. So the Bengals lose the timeout. The Colts don't, but they lose a challenge unless their second challenge of the night is successful. Then you earn a third one. But the biggest concern is Chad Johnson was wide open in the middle of the football field, Mike. That has to be a concern for the Colts defense. So instead of the first down, we have third and five. Off 53 for the Bengals ready to snap. That's Eric Gaichek. He continues to play the pivot instead of Rich Bram. With the game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 12 minutes 51 seconds. 12:51 on the game clock. That's a good job. I mean, Thank you. Lots of things happening. Sometimes people might forget to reset the clock. Nice job by Gene. See, I'm saying nice things about officials. Rookie referee, high-profile game here. Lots of playoff implications. It's Christmas. There'll be a lot going on tonight, and Gene certainly can handle it. Third and five. Out of the empty backfield. Palmer is flushed into the arms of Freeney, who forces a fumble recovered by the Colts' Anthony McFarland. Dwight Freeney, who's been quiet, forces the fumble. This is all on Carson Palmer. You've got a short route call. You want to get the ball off in a hurry. You don't get it off in a hurry when Dwight Freeney chases you. That's what's going to happen. So interesting what can happen here in Indianapolis. Tony Dungy decides to challenge, end up in a passing down third and five. Thus, Dwight Freeney gets a pass rush opportunity, a sack, a forced fumble, and now Peyton Manning and the Colts offense on the field from the Bengal 46. First toss is juggled and held on to by Ricky Prohl. So the veteran who has come in here in his 17th year in the league because of the injuries to Brandon Stokely and Dallas Clark bounced it around but caught his third pass of the year from Peyton Manning. Face of the NFL. Every time you watch a game and it's not even a Colts game you see him 10 or 15 times and he has uh, earned that job because of his great performance on the field. Typical no huddle, second and four, and a run with Dominique Rhodes gets the first down to the 32-yard line. And this is what you have to look for if you if you're interested in the Colts. The big question tonight is: Can the Colts regroup? And can they score early? Their defense is not built to wrestle with people, as we have been told. Their defense is built when they have a lead to go after quarterbacks, like they did with Carson Palmer. So it becomes critical, does it not, Joe, that the Colts score early? Yeah, and you saw with the first nine games in the last five have been for Peyton Manning. From the 33, fake the stretch, 
Manning the toss. Miscommunication with Marvin and Manning. Penalty marker down as the pass is incomplete. Marker down in the secondary. Rare that you see Manning and Marvin miscommunicate, but still may be a five yard flag on the Bengals. Legal use of the hands, hands to the face. Number 22 of the defense. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. That's Jonathan Joseph, who is starting for Delta O'Neill, who did not start essentially for disciplinary reasons in the last game. O'Neill will play tonight, but Joseph starts in his stead. Right down the bottom, number 22. You see him almost grab his face mask and wind up in no man's land. So from the 28, Reggie Wayne, bottom of your screen. Cole in the slot. Marvin Harrison, the thousand catch man up top. And here is Rhodes. Only a yard and a half. Rhodes out of the backfield. To the 21 yard line. He's at the bottom of the screen on the D line. Blocked by Tarek Glenn and Logan. Underneath Rhodes, first down. 16 yard line. Tackled by Landon Johnson. One of the things that Peyton Manning talked about was having to be patient. Taking the underneath coverage. That's a very uh, taking the underneath receivers. The thing that I've been impressed with, which I did not see against Jacksonville a week ago, is the receivers are holding on to the ball. They had six drops in the game against Jacksonville last week. Now the guys making plays, keeping the sticks moving. Now the rookie out of LSU, Joseph Adai, replaces Rhodes in the backfield. A dime. Smith there to greet him. Clean up work done by middle linebacker Brian Simmons. Virtually no gain there. You're tempted in a game like this when you have Peyton Manning and Carson Palmer to look for fireworks. And I love what Chad Johnson said yesterday. He said, this is no shootout. You know, it's not the wild, wild west. And we've seen this. Both offenses have come out. Both quarterbacks call plays at the line of scrimmage. And they've decided to be very, very careful when they go downfield. Manning usually has complete silence to call those plays in here. Some Cincinnati fans will make it a little bit louder than normal in the RCA Dome tonight. Manning to Ben Utech, the tight end. Hayes Vaharn with another tackle. He's going to play a lot because a lot of nickel tonight. It'll be third and about five. It's interesting, just from a selfish broadcasting point of view, that Manning gets to the line so quickly that you're tempted not to talk because you think he's going to immediately snap the ball. Then he stands there and sort of babbles for a while, and, and maybe he'll snap it two or three minutes later. <laughs> Meanwhile, nothing's ever being said. You saw Utec with the catch. He has to fill the role of Dallas Clark, who's out for a third straight week. The knee injured on a Sunday night against Philadelphia. And Brian Fletcher also out of this game. So weak in the tight end spot in the multiple receiver sets tonight. Manning takes a timeout. It's about halfway through the first, no score. Colts in the red zone, knocking on the door. Two of the NFL's show-stopping quarterbacks, Carson Palmer and Peyton Manning on display. Palmer was sacked by Dwight Freeney, a fumble that forced Indianapolis into good field position for this opening drive that they'll try to capitalize on on third and six. Manning throws low and incomplete intended for you check the tight end so the field goal unit and Adam Vinatieri will come out on fourth down if you're the Cincinnati Bengals you have to consider that a victory for your defense keeping Manning out of the end zone on a short field when you feel like you can move the ball with your offense not bad Peyton tries to go to Ben Utech in the middle now this is this is a route that Dallas Clark would run that's just a throw that's into the ground and he knows he let one get away an opportunity to get closer oh here is the greatest field goal kicker in the biggest games of them all Adam Vinatieri who's never missed here in the RCA Dome and from 30 yards he puts up the first point of the night so the challenge and the sack and the forced fumble turns into a field goal on the Colts opening drive so Carson Palmer with a turnover first time out gets back on the field when you come back it's the RCA dome top of the screen is the Lucas Oil Stadium that's the new stadium that will be built here and open in 2008 
the uh, Bengals defense has done a nice job in not letting teams score touchdowns in the red zone. The last uh, four plus games now eight trips to the red zone one touchdown allowed so not a lot of damage on the turnover. Three nothing lead Glenn Holt the kick return good open field tackle at the 24 yard line by Rocky Boyman and here's Michelle Tafoya. Well Mike just before the game defensive tackle Anthony McFarland told me Cincinnati is explosive they can hurt you in every way he said our defense needs to get stops early. Well look on Cincinnati's opening drive Dwight Freeney against the rookie Andrew Whitworth and Freeney goes in for a quick stop early. McFarland is right there to recover the fumble his first on the season. That's a quick early stop. We'll see if their confidence carries on Mike and Dwight Freeney getting back in the sack column with the Colts giving up rushing yards like nobody's business people have been running and not throwing and Freeney who's been double digit sacks every year only had two and a half before that one that came with the forced fumble on the last snap from their own 25 Rudy Johnson Cato June with the first tackle eh, it's about a gain of four Tony you see Carson Palmer handing the ball off there that's against his instincts. He told us the other day, I'm greedy. I want to throw the ball on every play, and I fight it every game. I tell myself, don't go for the knockout punch all the time. His coach, Marvin Lewis, says, I tell him, don't make a bad play worse. Eat the ball, throw it away. We don't have to score on this play. We can score on the next play, so let's see if he goes downtown on this one. Heavy set with two tight ends, two backs, and Chad Johnson, the lone receiver. It is the fullback, Jeremy Johnson, who's uh, moving a couple yards shy of the first down. Matt Giordano, one of those backup safeties, and Raheem Brock, part of the tackling party. This makes sense because the Indianapolis Colts are ranked 32nd in rush defense. Bob Kravitz from the Indianapolis Star said the only reason they're ranked 32nd is because there aren't 39 teams in the league. Yeah, they've really given up a lot of yards, over 176 yards defensively a game. The big thing is Cincinnati usually runs a no huddle offense, but you see them huddling up more and more to take more time off the clock and keep Peyton Manning standing. Third and two for Palmer. You saw a player on the sidelines. That was Bob Sanders. The safety was hurt. One of the big reasons it's been easy to run on the Colts this year. Rudy Johnson. For the first down to the 38-yard line. Well, Rudy Johnson went to junior college, was a star in junior college, one year at Auburn. He threatened Bo Jackson's single-season rushing marks. And in the National Football League, he's over 1,000 yards for the third straight year. He had 1,454 two years ago, 1,458 last year, and could very well get in that 1,400 neighborhood again this year. And not the biggest guy at 5'10", 215, but yet he runs with such power. He runs over people as well as around yeah, watch him tonight. Usually the pile goes forward when 32 has the ball in his hands. On first down. He gets to the 40. It'll be a gain of about two yards. One of the problems for the Colt defense was cutback running against Jacksonville, which basically means the back will start to one side of the formation and then come back the other way and make it very difficult for Ron Meeks defense the defensive coordinator of the Colts to be able to stop the big runs because there's usually only one guy on the other side a, whether it be a, a defensive back or a linebacker it's one on one in the open field I understand the logic of running do you think Carson Palmer just wants to throw and throw and throw because he's a quarterback and he says I don't want to just get three yards four yards at a time absolutely that's what we do <laughs> second and eight from the 40 Palmer loading for Chad Johnson who caught it for again a 15 in front of Nick Harper at the 45 first down Chad Johnson's resurgence back into this offense is also a reason why they've won their last four games one on one he's so difficult to stay with when you talk to Chad Johnson he felt like that he and Carson Palmer would be able to pick up where they left off at the end of the season it turns out with Carson's injury it didn't quite get that way but now they're in sync again nothing toward T.J. Hushmanzada yet tonight he's at the bottom of the screen first down run with Rudy and given four to the 40 yard line 
If you go back to last week against the Jacksonville Jaguars, it's one guy missing a tackle. You try and come up, you try and make the play. This is Anthony Bethe uh, Antonio Bethea, the rookie safety. He misses it. Now, Cato June, a linebacker. He actually has Drew Jones wrapped up and, and gone, 48 yards. I mean, they're missed tackles at the line of scrimmage with nobody around to help. This defense is predicated on help getting there. Antoine, I'm sorry, Joe. Antoine Bethea hurt his shoulder in that game. He's out tonight. So is Marlon Jackson, the first-round draft pick from 2005. They are staying with the run. And there's Johnson going forward, not being tackled, and another missed tackle. Giordano cleans it up with the 19. First down gain of 21. They just ran right over Cato June and Rob Morris. Now, Rob Morris is in the game because Gilbert Gardner, the other linebacker, had maybe This is open field. Look at this. There you go. I mean, you got safeties. Cato June hits him. Same thing. We just showed you that against Jacksonville. If he held him any longer, they'd be married in some cultures. They would have blown it dead. You know, come on. Bengals in the red zone. Palmer. Johnson. Ruled incomplete. What happens when you start running the football well, play action opens up big holes. Now, this is an excellent play by Jason David, but they oh, it opens up just big holes to be able to run and throw into because the linebackers are up around the line of scrimmage. And one of the things these drives do, the ability to run, is the ability of the team to keep it out of Peyton's hands. And that's why the Colts have the fewest possessions of any team in the National Football League this year. Thus, there's more pressure on them because they're not on the field as often, and they're going out with much more of a deficit than they have the past few years. Chris Henry, the third receiver, second and ten. Palmer right back to Johnson in front of Jason David. First down and goal at the eight-yard line. To that point you just made with Peyton Manning on the bench, that's why a lot of people think that when he comes out, he feels the pressure, you know, to throw a 14-point touchdown pass every time he gets out. They have not been the dominating offense that they used to be, and consequently, their defense is exposed. Often it looks like a high school game because they run so often against the Colts. They rarely pass. The Tony missed tackles like that are not exposing a defense. That's lousy play. Two tight ends set to block for Johnson. Well, one of the things that this Indianapolis defense has always been built for, and so many of these Tampa 2 defenses, Tony Dungy being the head coach and has sprinkled that so much around the league, is the ability to have speed if you don't have the size and speed to close. And one thing we saw there, a lot of blue shirts around the ball carrier. They need good pursuit to help clean up for those missed tackles. The other thing, Michael, is they're built to be playing with leads, mm -hmm. not to constantly be on the field this long a period of time. This they're is small. They are. They're small. They get pushed around. The six-minute drive gets to second and goal. And another run with Rudy Johnson. That time, Cato June came to make the play, and he's playing with a little more attitude after that last missed tackle when he got booed by the crowd at home. Yeah, when you get embarrassed, you have to stand up, and that's exactly what he does. He comes through. He's unblocked. They try and get to the outside. Good job by the Colt defense getting to the ball. That's the kind of pursuit. When I talked to Ron Meeks, he said, we have to play physical, and we have to play fast. And that's what you saw on that play. Glenn Holt in the game as a receiver. Four receivers. Penny Watson, the third down back, checks in. Third and goal. And Palmer with a gun. In and out of the hands of Chris Henry. Flag down. Back near the quarterback. A holding flag on the Bengals. Holding offense, number 77. Penny is the call. That's Whitworth, the guy who Freeney beat on the forced fumble on the first drop. During pregame warm-ups, Carson Palmer was out throwing those exact same routes to his wide receivers, and Chris Henry being one of them. That time, he just couldn't hang on to it. This ball is right where you wanted it to be. So Shane Graham will come on, second in the NFL, and... Career field goal accuracy. The currently unemployed Mike Vanderjack, the ex Colt, still atop that list. From 27. With the punter Kyle Larson putting it down. Each team has a field goal here in the first quarter. 
101 to go. Bengals kept it for a long time, and they come away with three. So Cincinnati and its potent offense, fourth in the league in passing yards coming into this week, they ran eight out of 13 times on that drive. Certainly enticed by the Colts' inability to stop the run, and it ends up in a field goal, and we're tied at three. Take what they give you, right? Beginning of the game, you take what they give you. Shane Graham with the kick, and Terrence Wilkins, 11th in the NFL in kickoff returns, got a nice block from Aaron Moorhead, and is brought down at the 30-yard line by Case Fahar. Manning back on the field, back in 30 seconds. Manning and the Colts start from their own 30. And a die, a little shake and bake. A penalty marker comes down as he's brought down after just a gain of about a yard. It was Brian Simmons who saw the dancing of the rookie a die. There is no foul for an ineligible man downfield. It was a running play. Will be second down. Wow. Now this crew happens to lead the crews in penalties, and maybe he was just practicing. <laughs> just anticipating <laughs> just, something. Just working on my throwing the flag. Yeah. Want to make sure I get it out there and get it comfortably out there. So a little embarrassing That's, on a running play. Yeah, on a running play. Yeah. Was the ball in the air? I don't know. And on second and nine, Manning's toss to Utech is complete. And the former Minnesota Golden Gopher gets a first down at the 45 before Jonathan Joseph tackles him after a gain of 14. Talking to Chuck Bresnahan, the defensive coordinator of the Bengals, he said there's two things we have to do tonight. He says we have to be able to communicate and execute the defense. And secondly, and more important than anything, is we have to be able to tackle. Because you know that the Indianapolis Colts are going to have guys in space. So you're going to have to get them on the ground. See if they squeeze one here before the end of the quarter. They will not in the first quarter. Comes to an end. Each team a field goal. 3-3. Cincinnati, Indianapolis after one. Well, there certainly are parallels. Star quarterbacks at big-time programs in college. Very big winners in Tennessee. Palmer a title at USC. Heisman Trophy runner-up for Manning and Palmer won it. Both the number one over all picks five years apart. NFL touchdown record for Manning. Tops in the league for Palmer last year when he went to the Pro Bowl. Peyton, he just kind of books his Hawaii ticket in August. He's always there. Twice the MVP <laughs> and, of the National Football League. And Mike, the score is 3-3. Three, three. That's right. <laughs> just trying to sprinkle that in. Games like this start like this often and then expand in the second quarter. Okay. You've been forewarned. Okay. Colts take over at the 45. And Manning to work to Marvin Harrison. First down and a gain of 11. Catch 1,002 for the 11th year man out of Syracuse. That would be a matchup that would favor the Colts. Marvin Harrison against Jonathan Joseph, the rookie out of USC. He can't try and jump him. He'll eat him alive if he gets too close. Marvin becoming the fourth man to get to that thousand yard mark last week in the loss at Jacksonville. The Fane Colts stretch play with a die is snuffed out quickly by the Bengals and John Thornton out of West Virginia. Mentioned Harrison now has 1,002 catches. Jerry Rice obviously setting the bar with 1549. But of these four in league history to get to 1,000, Harrison doing it quicker than anyone else. He did it in 167 games. Rice did it in 181. And yet Harrison said he has no chance of catching Jerry Rice, even though he got to the same mark quicker than Jerry. He said the other day, no chance. Essentially almost a full season quicker, 14 games. Loss of a deuce, second and 12. Play fake Manning, a die with tons of room. The rookie with a first down to the 31-yard line, brought down by Brian Simmons and Super Bowl MVP Dexter Jackson. Peyton Manning is so masterful with his play fakes. He makes every one of those fakes look like the handoff. Here he is, just like he would hand it off, sticks the ball in. You see the linebackers start up the run. Now they run back to try and cover pass. Now they have to run up to try and, try and make a tackle. You got the linebackers on a complete yo-yo. 
The die and Rhodes have uh, equaled the productivity that was here from the great Edger and James, who moved on to Arizona in free agency. From the 31, Reggie Wayne heard from. Ducks down after a gain of about eight. I am, for horn tackle. I am very impressed with the patience of Peyton Manning. He's just not going to force the ball against the Cincinnati secondary. He's going to take everything underneath, let the linebackers run back into coverage, and just didn't he say do that catch. the other day? Be patient. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason he's the MVP. Yeah, but There's what happens? The closer you get to the goal line, the more difficult it is to get everybody further away. Everything becomes more compressed. Mm -hmm. Second and one. A die tries to get to the outside. He does to get the first down into the red zone. Michelle Tafoy has more on the rookie out of LSU. Well, yeah, Joseph Adai told me he's not afraid to ask questions or admit when he doesn't know something during training camp. He asked a lot of questions. One night he texted a question to uh, Peyton Manning. The next thing he knew, Manning was at his door ready to answer in person. He sat down with him, diagrammed a few plays on paper, and Peyton said to him, look, if you ever have any questions, just ask. And Adai has, and he's learned quickly, Mike. So here we saw that in the Philadelphia game when he had four touchdowns in the first half. Peyton also delivers at room service. If he had texted his order, he would have got something to eat. <laughs> That's the next commercial he does. Play action. Comes back to the rookie Adai. Good shake and bake, and Adai keeps it going to the three. First and goal, Colts. It's interesting, Joe. I want to get back to your point, what Peyton Manning was taking. Guys like Brett Favre will always say, I don't want to make that pass. I don't want to take short yardage. I want to gun it in all the time. And Manning is willing to do it, and he's gone. He hasn't gone down the field like he usually does in big chunks, but look where they are. That's why his, completion, that's why his completion percentage is where it is. And the thing is, he keeps it's, dumping But it it's a stylistic difference, isn't it? It, it? For a smart quarterback, no. The way he's played before, yes. Every team that's gotten inside the five on the Bengals this year has scored 11 for 11 on the season. Only such defense in the league. A die taken back beyond the five yard line. Jonathan Fenene, second year man out of Utah, and Brian Simmons meet at the rookie running back. With that statistic you gave, that could be the first loss anybody's ever suffered no, inside the box. Not exactly. It's, it's, they're still it's theoretically. The yeah. They're still inside. So. Yeah, they scored a touchdown right. in each one of those appearances yeah. inside the five-yard line. Going for a, a perfect dozen of the wrong kind. Look at the chant of defense from those Cincinnati fans who made the two-hour drive. Manning. Lots of guys dropping back in coverage, so that is a get rid of it and live for third and goal from the five. That's what I was talking about before, Mike. We saw him very judiciously, Tony, drop the ball, drop the ball off. All of a sudden now, everything's compressed. Wants to go to Reggie Wayne out to the left. Nowhere to go. Torrey James is sitting there. And as they move through the formation, there are more Bengals that get picked up. Now you've got Marvin on the inside. Everybody's, yep, yep. See, Peyton's not going to scramble around and create space. He's going to work basically from the pocket. So the receivers have to keep moving to help him. A die lines up in the slot near you as the fourth receiver, essentially. Third and goal from the four. Manning throws to Harrison. Touchdown. In a tight window, they hook up one more time. Long as he keeps moving, he'll get him the ball. So the Cincinnati streak remains intact. You get inside the five, you score. Touchdowns. And it's Manning to Marvin for an NFL record 101st passing touchdown. Watch what Marvin does. He gets, he comes in fast, and then he slows down right in the hole where he expects Peyton to put the ball. Just, just a real feel for one another. Extra point added by Vinatieri. That's why they're like a couple that's been married for 51 years. They know where each other's going to be at every moment. They know I make you better, you make me better, and they make beautiful music as well. Peyton's number and a die, and Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne, lit up on that beautiful pagoda. And uh, yeah, those are numbers that have seen many a checkered flag in this building. 101 touchdowns. From Peyton Manning to Marvin Harrison. 10-3 the lead. Kickoff tight to the sideline and picked up 
by Glenn Holt, who is tackled at the 27-yard line by Keith O'Neill, a backup linebacker. Carson Palmer back on the field, and when we come back, Matthew McConaughey joins us in the booth. Very mild, beautiful day in Indianapolis. You look at Monument Circle in downtown, adorned with the holiday lights. We're just a short walk over to the RCA Dome. You see many of the lights downtown are on for the Colts as they share the national stage with Carson Palmer and the Bengals. 10-3, Indy on top. And Chad Johnson's crew gets to work from their own 28-yard line. A reverse with Johnson. And Chad, only a yard. Matt Giordano, the safety, comes up for a big hit. Chad, Chad is not going to turn it up the field. Okay? Chad, it's taking a beeline for the sidelines on this one. A lot of times you see a guy on a reverse turn it up the field. He says, nah, you know what? The shortest distance for me to be safe is to head out of bounds. Well, we'll talk about all the safety injuries to Bob Sanders and Antoine Bethea and no Marlon Jackson. So here's Giordano, fourth round pick last year out of Cal and Dexter Reed. They're the guys who everybody says, ah, forget it. We got no chance with those guys. Big play by Giordano there. Sets up second and nine. And run to the 31 with Rudy Johnson. Dexter Reed, that other safety, joined Rob Morris there on the tackle. We are joined here in the booth by Matthew McConaughey. And if you've been watching football, you've seen the ads for the movie We Are Marshall that will be starting uh, in theaters near you as the holidays get here. But you are a huge Redskins fan for your days growing up. Always have been. Get started with rooting for the Indians versus the Cowboys and Westerns. <laughs> and then it went to uh, favorite food being hamburgers. You got Chris Hamburger, then the Theisman, Riggins, Gibbs, the Fun Bunch, the Hogs, the Group. I like that. Big football fan, Matthew. We'll talk about that here in a second. Pressure on third and seven. Palmer throwing the deep ball, and it is incomplete intended for Chris Henry with Nick Harper back there on coverage and a three and out from the Colts defense. Nice job by Nick Harper staying stride for stride with Chris Henry. Chris Henry should have a size advantage. He's 6'4". Nick Harper's 5'10". There's the contact. And Carson Palmer just actually can't get it out far enough. This is a terrific job by Nick Harper. First punt for Kyle Larson. He hasn't punted in 15 days. Didn't punt in the game against Oakland. First time that's happened in a Bengals game since 1989. Terrence Wilkins muffs it. It is available to be recovered by the Bengals. And let's see who gets to the bottom of the pile. And the scrum is over. This one may wind up in the arms of the Cincinnati Bengals. Looks like they had a shot at it. Got Tony Stewart, the tight end, 86, digging there at the bottom of the pile. And we still got a, a lot going on here at the bottom. Wilkins is fighting in there to get the ball back. He did not. The Wilkins muff becomes a Bengals recovery. Now every once in a while a coach says a punt can be a good play. Well, in that case, a punt could be a good play. Well, Wilkins tries to take off and run before he has the ball. The pressure coming down forces him to try and make a move instead of just fair catching it. You know, just fair catch it. Instead, he tries to make a move before he winds up catching the ball, and it goes right through. It takes his eye off it, goes right through his arms, and now you give Cincinnati an opportunity. So the turnover is even out. Wilkins has been a longtime kick returner, mostly for the Colts in 0-2 with St. Louis. Ethan Kilmer was the gunner who came down. The Penn Stater put the pressure on to allow Palmer to keep this one going for the Bengals at the Indianapolis 25. And Palmer hit as he throws almost intercepted as Giordano was sneaking up there. Dwight Freeney getting in once again. Wow. Andrew Whitworth has his hands full at the left tackle position. You have to block Freeney with two people. Can't let him go alone. That spin move is just so quick. It's so quick. It's unfair. Hmm. You cannot block him one-on-one. -on -one. Well, somebody might, but this guy can't. Uh, not too many can. Look much more like the Freeney who led the league in 04 with 16 sacks in that great rookie season where he forced nine fumbles to go with 13 sacks. Second and ten, Rudy Johnson. 
for about three yards. Michelle has more on the Colts defensive end, Freeney. Yeah, Freeney told me yesterday the current rules are taking away from the game. It's absolutely ridiculous. The quarterback is living in a bubble. There are so many rules, I can only hit him in the belly button. Is he a player or isn't he? He's the most protected guy on the field, and we should be able to force him into decisions. We should go back to in the grass where you're going to see quarterbacks flopping. He said it's sad, 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 but he's not sad tonight, Mike. He's working it. His presence felt unlike it's been at any point in this Colts season. Quick snap with a change in there. Reggie McNeil took the direct snap. And the former Texas A&M quarterback who's played wide receiver on this wrinkle gets a first down. So an interesting wrinkle there as they Woo. go to Reggie McNeil. Matthew, you saw a lot of him as he played for Texas A&M because you followed uh, Texas, the national champions, with Vince sure Young so closely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good to see Vince doing so well in the uh, NFL so quickly. You know, we knew he had legs, uh, we knew he had an arm, but already we're seeing him as a leader. And uh, to be leading the Titans down the, down the, uh, the field and getting the wins like he is now, it's good to see it happen so quickly. Yeah, the Tennessee Titans with Vince Young, 7-7, seven and seven, and could be a game out of the wild card spot at the end of the night if the Colts beat the Bengals here. First and 10, Palmer back under center. Rudy Johnson spun out of the Gary Brackett tackle. Giordano with the clean up there. You know, I have sat next to uh, the world's sexiest man before, but it's usually Thiesman. Right. But this time I have somebody who's actually <laughs> voted the world's sexiest and man. And actually good. sexy. Good about that. <laughs> right. Right. Thank you, I know guys. Joe thinks it's him, but it's actually Matt. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks I heard so it was you too, Joe. I appreciate that. I heard it was you Thank too. You. Thank you. Hey, why did why did you do the movie? Best story I've ever, ever read. Plus, it was true. Hey, tell me it after this yeah. play. Second down and seven. Rudy Johnson with a gaping hole takes it to the end zone. And the muff by Wilkins turns into a Bengals touchdown. The commitment of the Cincinnati Bengals to want to run the football. Third and seven, they put in a trick play, get a first down. They run it the next play, and then they run it again. The Colts have a problem, and it's not going away. There he is again. Missed tackle at the five-yard line. I mean, Dexter Reed has a shot at him. Needed a touchdown there. Needed. Because it. they got the break, they got the gift, and you wouldn't want to get a field goal there. And then, and then Peyton Manning comes down, and maybe he goes down the field, and suddenly the game begins to get out of reach. That was a critical touchdown Half to Cincinnati. Answer. 16 runs to nine passes. Cincinnati has taken the approach. You saw the shot of Wilkins on the sideline right after the touchdown. I'm good. Don't worry about it. I got my chance to get them back on the other side. But the muff turns into a touchdown, and Rudy Johnson takes it to the end zone for the 11th time this year. Each team a field goal on the first touchdown here in the second. Uh, the usually reliable kick returner Terrence Wilkins with the muff as Ethan Kilmer had the good pressure. Cincinnati dug it out of the bottom of the pile, and Rudy Johnson. After that much maligned Colts defense uh, showed pretty well actually got a three and out Johnson bumps it in we're all tied at 10 Wilkins dying to get his hands on this one from the eight and running with a purpose Terrence Wilkins following his blockers that's a nice kickoff return to make a slight amends for the error to the 39 yard line last time on the field Peyton Manning led him to a touchdown he's 10 of 12 passing tonight he's back on when you come back. Game tied at 10, each team one turnover, each team 99 yards. Dead even as we start this drive with Dominique Rhodes. Flag and a first down at the 41. Let's check the laundry. If the game holds up, it's 20. If it doesn't, it's first and 20. Tony Dungy was right over there questioning the call on the sideline. As the offensive lineman came out to block. Legal block in the back. Offense number 63. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. And Jeff Saturday, the center out of North Carolina. Here's Manning from the 32. First down throw to Ben Utech. It's complete. Gain of nine yards. And if you keep doing that day to day, you put together a good week. Four good weeks make a good month. Twelve of those make a good year. And they kept a football program together. And it was almost done. They almost shut the football program yes. down. So more than just a football movie, which it is, it's a good lesson in life, which is we have to do that every day, whether it's how you deal with Katrina, 9-11, or any kind of tragedy you have in your own life or family. If you got, you got to put on your boots in the morning, get out of bed, and just do one at a time. The second and seven here for Manning and the Colts in this 10-10 game. UTEC underneath. 
Matthew. He'll get the first down stretched out by Medea Williams before he lets it go, Matthew. Mm -hmm. Your love as a football fan, growing up rooting for Joe Theismann and the Redskins, mm -hmm. uh, how much did that contribute to your passion that you got for this movie and this script? Well, I tell you, um, one, I've always loved football, but I've always, also always loved the psychology of sports. Now, football is a great team sport, mm. um, like anything. If the one guy out of the 11 is not doing his job, you're going to know where the leak in the bucket is, and it's not going to work. Now, that may be a, uh, a uh, two-yard loss, or that may be a 10-yard sack, whatever that may be, if that's a lineman or what have you. Here is Manning, the fake, and Manning, who is rarely sacked, uh, brought down sack. right near the line of scrimmage. Some good pressure brought by Brian Robinson. It's also a game of, uh, as I said earlier, persistence. You got to put together a good series and to win a game, you got to put together one play at a time. Good series, good quarter, good half, two good halves, you have the best chance of winning the game. It's like Cincinnati's defensive line. They know that they're not going to get there a lot, but if you're persistent enough, maybe you can force him into an error. Maybe mm -hmm. you can get him on the ground like they did. Look at the defensive line in those 16 sacks in a season. That's one a game. How many plays is that that you don't get a sack? After officially a sack 15th of the year on Manning, Dominique Rhodes with a gain of just a yard. Well, we look forward to seeing the movie that'll be uh, in theaters come Christmas. And great to see you. Thanks for joining and us, Matthew. Most gratifying work experience I've ever had. And uh, I'd like to say happy holidays to America out there. And thanks for having me up here in the booth. Um, thanks, just keep partner. living. Thank and I'll you. see you the next time. Good to see you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Have a good one. Matthew McConaughey God joining bless. us. His, uh, love of the Texas Longhorns we saw on the sidelines. Love of the Redskins growing up in the movie We Are Marshall. That'll be in theaters coming up here this week. Third and nine for Manning. Pressure. Manning takes off, and Peyton Manning runs for 14 yards. What are the, the odds down. on that? <laughs> what are the Nin odds on that? 19 carries. 16 yards total this year running the football. Wow. And he got 14 more on this one. This is one of those things. Do whatever you need to do to make a play. And that's exactly what he did. Slide in a hurry. Absolutely slide in a Don't hurry. Don't get hit. The rare Peyton Manning run. He did in 2001 have a 33-yard touchdown run. Really? He's good for about one double-digit run per season. That may have been it right there. I'll be tested him after that 33 yard. First and 10, the throw to Reggie Wayne. Reggie's second catch of the night is going to be a gain of seven yards with second and three coming up. By the way, I, I told McConaughey on the way out that there are people here taking pictures of us. I said I was going to take his head from the picture, yeah. superimpose it on my head, and send these out for cards next year so I would look that good. I think that was a great idea. I'd even look better than you, and my head would be next to your head, and I would look better than you for the first time. Because <laughs> it'd be his head. <laughs> Neat guy. Colts in three receivers. Aaron Moorhead is the third at the top of the screen. Peyton adjusts to this Dominique Rhodes run. Good tackle by Landon Johnson firing through the guy who went to college here in the state, went to Purdue. Mike, what we're seeing out of Peyton Manning isn't any different than what happened really last week against Jacksonville. The difference is the guys are catching the football. They dropped six of them last week, which didn't allow the drives to continue. Coming up here on the two-minute warning with third and two. Just try to draw them off with the cadence. We'll have third and two after the two-minute warning. 10-10. This game last year was an eye-popping offensive show. Remember that first half, 62 points, was 35-27. Dungy's Colts scored on the first five possessions, up and down the field. Then the second half slowed down. Here, the defenses, philosophically and physically, have kind of try to just be conservative. It's the reason the score has been kept down as the Colts get to third and two. Manning has hit his last five. Make it six to Aaron Moorhead. First down at the 24-yard line. I don't think you can emphasize this enough as to what this game means to the Colts. Tony Dungy said the other day on the Colts' website, this is the defining game of our season. They are reeling. They have lost three out of four. Cincinnati comes in here very, very hot. If they were to get pushed around in this game, they would indeed lose confidence. And, and this... 
if, if, you, if you take a, a stab at who needs this more than the other, it would seem that the Indianapolis Colts at home need this one more. Bengals trying to win their fifth in a row. First down, Manning comes back to Moorhead, who got lit up, but holds on Jonathan Joseph with the hit at the 20. Gain of four. See, Peyton Manning, interestingly enough, he looks at all the receivers and where they were as soon as the play is over. So if he wants to come back to that same route, he knows he has the choice of another receiver. Manning pumps into the middle of Marvin. Harrison on the run. From the five, goes toward the end zone and down at the one-yard line. You're not going to take credit for this. I'm going to say it that you said a minute ago. Joe said a minute ago, don't go to sleep on Marvin Harrison right now. And there you had it. You can't. When he get when when Peyton Manning gets closer to the goal line, he has such confidence in Marvin, and Marvin knows where to find the holes so well. A guy finding out what to do. Manning's running in three times this year. Fakes to a die. The end was shut off, so Manning goes forward, loses a couple, have to take a timeout. They have one remaining with 17 seconds left. So Peyton tried to catch Cincinnati there, and he turned into Vince Young and Michael Vick. He tried to run it twice on the drive for a first down well, and then a touchdown. A Hold it. Hold it. I thought it was <laughs> in his quite. contract that he was only allowed to run once in a game. Tony, you mentioned it. Marvin Harrison works the middle of the football field, finds all. See how he just slows down? He doesn't go running through a hole. He's so good, so disciplined. That's how you wind up with thousands of catches, a thousand catches. Slows down right in the hole, right where Peyton knows where to find him. I found the call by Peyton not in the best interest of that offense at that time. And what's been going on tonight with Cincinnati's defense playing well, a little bit more conservative for the Colts? Well, it's easy, Mike. When you look at Peyton's pass chart, certainly 17 out of 19, yep, but only for 145 yards. 15 of those completions comes under 10 yards, or up to 10 yards. Only two over 20 yards. And, and that's, that's exactly the way, to be honest with you, when I talked to Chuck Bresnahan, the defensive coordinator of the Bengals, that's what they wanted Peyton to do. They wanted him to dump it off. They wanted him to throw underneath. I don't think they wanted to do it this successfully, but that's what they had hoped they would do. Thus a limited impact. Harrison, three catches, Wayne, two. They have five of the Manning completions tonight. Manning caught by Harrison. Touchdown. He is just that good. He's so quick and creates such space that he gets open and makes it an easy throw for the quarterback. Peyton just held on to it. What is that, 600 touchdowns that he's thrown to him already? Uh, it's a hundred and a lot. <laughs> Peyton double clutches. He hangs the ball in the air. And that's Delta O'Neal in on the play. And Marvin Harrison's inside him for the score. Now make it 102 touchdown connections. And Vinatieri's extra point makes it 17. And what a drive for Peyton. 8 of 8, 59 yards, and that big 12-yard scramble for a first down. We mentioned the record that these guys uh, have uh, just put almost out of touch here. It goes back to, and it was held for a long time by Colts greats, Unitas and Barry, of course, the Baltimore Colts. But now as you go through, Jim Kelly and Andre Reid have 65 career touchdowns. Marino and Clayton, 79. The mark was held by our colleague Steve Young, Jerry Rice, for a while at 85, but eclipsed by Manning and Harrison, and on they go. Two here in the first half in a game, as you said, Tony, so important to the really Colts. Desperate. 102. And they come back, and after Cincinnati scores, they come back and answer at a drive with a limited amount of time, go right down the field. I mean, Marvin Harrison, he says he can't get 500 more catches, but he can get 40 more touchdown passes from Peyton Manning at this rate. He can do that. He just doesn't take a lot of hits. Should they have been up on him closer at the one-yard line? Should they have been a guy right in his face he was. right there? That's Delph O'Neal. That wasn't yeah. Jonathan Joseph, the rookie. That yeah. was Delph O'Neal, a Pro Bowl corner. And what happens with guys so quick down around the goal line, you give them one move. You win at the line of scrimmage. You give them a move at the line of scrimmage, and it creates space for you. I found it interesting, and Harrison was telling us this week that I don't, I don't take ice. I don't get massages. Yeah. I don't have these massage treatments that a lot of guys Nothing have. Nothing hurts. Yeah. Vinatieri squibbing it 
And Cincinnati might get decent field position out of it as it is fielded by Reggie Kelly and out at the 35. Susie Colbert. Well, Mike, the strength of this Bengals team coming into the season was continuity along the offensive line until three-fifths of the line got hurt. Rudy Johnson told me it took a while to develop a new personality, but they did. The right side of the line with Billy Anderson and Bobby Williams has been the power side. The left side, the athletic side. Rudy told me tonight they wanted to pound this Colts defense, and they did. It's been dominant to the right, but here's a tough break for the Bengals. Right tackle. Willie Anderson out with a right ankle injury. They're calling it questionable. That'll be something to watch in the second half. He's the heart and soul of this team. Yeah, he is, Susie. We visited with him this week. Such a steady force in that locker room. Try to get a quick hit on the ground with Rudy Johnson. Gets into the secondary. Brought down at midfield. Beg your pardon. It's Kenny Watson, the third down back. But we get to the half before the Bengals. Well, let's see if the Bengals get the timeout. The Bengals may have gotten the timeout here before the clock hit double zero. Second charge timeout of the half. They did. Cincinnati will be a 30-second timeout. With the game clock operator, please reset the game clock to two seconds. Two seconds on the game clock. So from midfield they're going to have an opportunity to take a shot downfield. Hang on Marvin. So while they talk about it on the sideline here's the scoring that has happened here tonight. Teams open with some field goals. Dwight Freeney's forced fumble recovered by Booger McFarland setting up the Adam Vinatieri try from 30 yards. Cincinnati responded with a Shane Graham field goal 3-3 after one to the second. Manning to Marvin for the 101st time, capping a 70-yard drive. The muff punt by Terrence Wilkins put the Bengals in business at the Colts 25, and Rudy Johnson capped that off with his 11th rushing touchdown of the season, tied at 10. Then Manning and Marvin hook up for the second time, 102 in their career, just a moment ago to make it 17-10. Three receivers left, one right. Final play of the half unless a defensive foul comes. They strip it from Palmer, and the Colts come up with a big play defensively. Raheem Brock comes in and knocks it away at the half. So they put it on the ground twice there, and Indianapolis's defense gets the job done. And now the Toyota Halftime Show with Chris Berman, Steve Young, Michael Irvin, Tom Jackson, fastest three minutes, jacked up, and the Knicks' Nuggets suspensions. Colts get the ball first to start the third. Indy leads by seven, and here's Chris. Game with huge playoff implications. Third quarter from the RCA Dome. Marvin Harrison has caught two Peyton Manning touchdowns in the first half. It's been a quiet half for Chad Johnson. Marvin Lewis's defense has done a decent job, but Tony Dungy's crew trying to improve to 11 and 3, leading here by seven. Susie Call from Michelle Tafoya on the sideline. Mike Joe and Tony up here in the booth, and the second half begins with a Terrence Wilkins return from the two. And Wilkins is taken out of bounds by Ethan Kilmer at the 24. Fans want a flag. And none forthcoming as Marcus Wilkins cleaned up the hit. All right, the quarterbacks, the stars coming in. Carson Palmer, three completions. That is a career low in a first half, and he lost a fumble. Meantime, Peyton Manning opened 18 of 20. It's the second time in his NFL career that he has hit 18 of his first 20 passes. The other time was at Miami in 1999. Now, not to offer an excuse for Carson Palmer, but their plan is clearly to run the ball a whole lot more than Indianapolis. Three for eight is not very good, but he's not having the opportunity to throw it in the way that Peyton Manning is. Well, if the Colts score here, you'll see Cincinnati be forced to open the game. They're going to have to throw it. Right. Sure. Three full possessions for the Colts. They've scored on all three. Field goal, two touchdowns. Peyton has to be elusive in the pocket and throw to Dominique Rhodes, who lost the ball and gets it back on the recovery. And uh, let's see, now is it being ruled an incomplete pass? Yes, it is. So now it is ruled an incomplete pass. Would have been a gain of a yard anyway, so it becomes relatively insignificant, except for the turnover issue. Peyton shows his niftiness moving around in the pocket. While the officials are spotting the ball, Peyton Manning is calling plays. I mean, he is always putting pressure on the defense. That incompletion stopped a run of nine in a row, complete by Manning. And Peyton to a wide open Marvin Harrison looking for space to gain more. To the 47-yard line, first down, gain of 23 yards. What Peyton Manning is doing is he's going to force Cincinnati to play more man-to-man. -man. They want to play a zone against him, and he's being very patient. Marvin Harrison working the middle of the football field. Peyton steps up, and there's nobody home. That's about as big a hole in the defense as you're going to find. 
from the 46 yard line. Rhodes with a run about four. And let's check in with Susie Culp. Marvin Lewis knew this was going to be a challenge for his defense. He said in the second half, we can't waver in our execution. In the first half, on a few plays, we weren't in the right spots. That's what plagued this Bengals defense earlier in the season. He said the Colts offense is executing to perfection, catching everything. In fact, they had just one drop, and that continues. He said we had two drops in, in this kind of game. That could be the difference. And the drops were a problem last week for the Colts, Tara Glenn. Offense, number 78, five-yard penalty, second down. Rocked in his snap. Peyton Manning is such a complete quarterback. This is, look at it. This is what he does before the touchdown. Looks left, looks left, comes back, pumps, now fires the ball to Marvin Harrison. He just looks you up. You can control a defense when you have so much time to be able to stand back there and throw the ball. But the guy has to know exactly where you're going to put it to. Second down. Richie Wayne, a yard shy of the first down. Third and one coming up. We talked about the Colts' success out of the gate with their uh, field goal drive. And there you see the two touchdown drives of 70 and 61 yards. But look at the time. We're always talking about the length of drives against the Colts to keep Manning off the field. They did a nice job of getting that Cincinnati offense frustrated, keeping them off the field. Hard to play when you're a spectator. On third and one, the Bengals defense comes up with a big play on Rhodes. Let's check the spot as Landon Johnson came in for the hit. Peyton will want to go here. Probably going to be a little short, and Peyton's going to want to go. Dungey asking for a measurement. We'll get one here, get an idea of how close it will be. Who controls that? If you're, if you're Peyton Manning as a quarterback and you're the head coach, do you say, I'm going with Peyton Manning even if my instinct is to punt the ball? Yes. He's earned that. He's earned that right. Okay. Yep. No measure. It. They will go for it. The Colts have not gone for it on fourth and one at all this year. Until now. And they go with a die who is stopped. So the Bengal defense comes up with the play. They had penetration on the other side on the ends. Justin Smith and Brian Robinson. Cincinnati with momentum takes over at its own 45-yard line. Colts stopped on fourth and one. Bengals take over at their own 45 with a chance to tie the game. First possession of the third. Huge, huh, Mike? Mm -hmm. Huge. Mm -hmm. Huge play by the Bengal defense. Yeah, those are the guys you were looking at that got the credit for it. Uh, the defensive line for Cincinnati coming up with the surge, getting to the other side of the line. So Carson Palmer takes over at the 45 and throws the out for Chad Johnson right at the sticks. Very close to a first down. Defensive lines have to play on the other side of the line of scrimmage. That's Brian Robinson right there. He's going to come across and knock the guard back. The center, Jeff Saturday, is going to try and block him. Justin Smith, number 90, comes from the outside. And John Thornton, number 97, make a play behind the line of scrimmage. Bengals go no huddle. A little bit quicker tempo for Cincinnati. Palmer, Hushmanzada for the first time tonight with a flag down. He's down at the 21, a gain of 24 for TJ. Gonna be pass interference against. Gonna be pass interference against the Colts. Illegal contact. Defense number 42. Penalty is declined. First down. Let me go back to that last play, Joe. As a result of them not making the first down, without influence, Dungey next time to call off Peyton Manning and say, "No, we're not going for it on fourth and one." No. No, it would not. So there's no penalty for missing something like that nope. and, and putting Cincinnati in a position where they have a short field just down one touchdown. No. Okay. After gains of 10 and 24, Palmer plays Peyton to adjust the play. And the Colts adjust their defense. Rudy Johnson toss. 
the Colts getting on the other side of the offensive line. No gain there. Susie talked about Willie Anderson's injury in the first half. The 11 year veteran right tackle still out. Stacey Andrews playing that spot now, Joe. When you see the Cincinnati Bengals at the line of scrimmage, that means that Carson Palmer has been given three runs and three plays to pick. He has an opportunity to pick and choose where he wants to go. When they huddle, they have a more selective group of plays they like to use. It's kind of interesting. You saw Chad Johnson looking back. I don't think he exactly knew where Carson was going there. Now he's got a clue. Second and ten to a run with Rudy Johnson. Patient to find the hole and keep the pile going a yard. Shot of the first down. We'll have third and one coming up. The Colts Achilles heel has been the ability for people to run the football in long yardage situations. Second down and ten. Third down and eight. Against the Colts a year ago, the way they were ranked, those were passing situations. Now all of a sudden, they're doing it. All right, up inside. That time, forget about a missed tackle. That's just excellent blocking. And good patience by Johnson. 15 carries, 73 yards for Rudy. One for the first down, a dozen for the touchdown. Rudy Johnson. That time, they were able to slow him down. Cato June, who missed a tackle in the first half, missed him big time last week, made the initial contact for the cleanup by Gary Brackett. That's Field goal up. coming. Michael, that time Cato June made the play, but in the first half, he certainly struggled. There's Rudy Johnson. Cato June hits him right square up on the numbers. And 20 yards later, after Dexter, uh, after Dexter Reed comes in to try and make the play, doesn't happen. Again, Dexter Reed has a shot at him going in the end zone. Shane, this time they stepped up. Mm -hmm. Shane Graham good from 27, now from 30. Seventeen, thirteen. That's interesting. We don't expect defense necessarily here, but you got defense from the Colts at one point right there. You don't expect it. You had it from the Bengals before that. It's a field goal only. You only hope that Marvin Harrison and Peyton Manning retire in the same year. It's probably not going to happen, but I say that because they deserve to go into the Hall of Fame together because they will be inexorably linked and they will be Hall of Famers with their eye-popping numbers. Every year the question, can they and the Colts take it to that next level? They've already won the AFC South, trying to build on that here tonight, and there they go again. Manning to Marvin to the 42-yard line, first down, give him 17. They have these banners here. They got AFC South champion 2004, AFC South champion 2005, AFC finalist 2003. They're missing the banner that says we got to the Super Bowl. And, and though that's the overriding issue with Peyton Manning and this team. You know they're going to make the playoffs. How far will they go? We'll pick it up after this play. Which is a run with a die. Bounces off the first hit and gets five yards to the 47-yard line. If you ask Peyton Manning this, he hits the issue straight on. You say, is it a failure if this team doesn't go to the Super Bowl? It's a direct quote. That seems to be the common question. Is it a failure? I don't know that I would use the word failure. Certainly our expectations were cut and dry very clear. You look around, who's better than us? We feel we can beat any team in the league. Anything less would be a major disappointment. So that's what they're built for here. Getting all the way to the Super Bowl, which they have never done. Pumping, going to the other side, and Moorhead, who established the first down with his forward progress. First down at the 47 yard. It's the age old debate. Marino and Elway become the guys because Manning's going to have those Hall of Fame, best of all time type numbers. You know, Elway was terrific, and then when they got over the top, Terrell Davis was there. <laughs> they always had the defense, but now Elway is seen in a slightly different light. Marino, he did get to the one early on, but you know what? Still regarded, when you say who's the best quarterback ever, Marino's name comes up pretty darn quick in the conversation. A die into the secondary. Joseph Adai turns on the Jets to the races. Adai pushed out of bounds. First and goal, Indianapolis at the six. That is the burst that Joseph Adai gives you. He's going to be approaching 1,000 yards as well. But this is the burst that he gives you. Right off tackle, up inside. Now, take it outside. Good job by Marvin Harrison just getting in the way of Delpha O'Neal, number 24, to allow him to turn the corner. Adai's shaking up on the play. This, this is that position that the Colts are in 
They're inside the five or close to the five. If they go in with one more touchdown, they put pressure on Cincinnati to come back and score a touchdown. No more field goals for them. A die walked off under his own power. Colts training staff looking at him on the sideline. First and goal for, Man for Peyton Manning and the Colts. And they run Dominique Rhodes to the one-yard line. John Thornton the tackle. And this is the magic area, right? This is the area where Cincinnati yields touchdowns and does it inside the five, right? 12 they've for done 12. It, they've done it twice today. And this is the third time. You know, Colts could go 24-13 here. And to your point, Tony, that will really put the pressure on Cincinnati's offense. Cap score touchdowns, not field goals anymore. Harrison has caught two tonight. Make it three. Marvin Harrison, Indianapolis, touchdown again. Peyton Manning gets the look he wants. He's got Delph O'Neal in a press, and he's going to throw it to the back shoulder of Marvin Harrison. And you can't even count how many times they have thrown this route. Out to the right, Marvin starts up, throws it out, makes the play. Then he just throws it behind him. He knows exactly where he's going to be, and Marvin knows where the ball is going to be. And you talk about that communication and how important it is to be on the same page inside the five down there. Of their 103 touchdowns, 34 of them have been inside the 10, where it's a quick move. It's just faking out the opponents. It's those thousands of hours of knowing. Like I said before, it's like that couple married 51 years. You know exactly where they're going to be at every second. Like me and Wilbon, in other words. Something like married that. Married couple. <laughs> Peyton Manning's been down near flawless here tonight. Three touchdown passes, and the third one makes some news. Now tied for eighth in NFL history with 269 career touchdown passes, and he's tied with Vinny Testaverde, and he's done it in 83 fewer games than Vinny, and that includes yesterday because Vinny got in the game at the end of the fourth quarter. Vinatieri with a touchback sends it all the way back, and that gets the fans excited. Carson Palmer has a long field to go after Vinatieri's ninth touchback of the year. It's only a two-possession deficit for Cincinnati, but the way the Colts are playing, it's kind of getting to that point where they have to get going. For Chris Henry, who gets hit by the safety Giordano, covered well by Jason David, pass incomplete. These safeties have played pretty well here for the Colts tonight, and they've been the guys on the hot seat. Carson Palmer cannot get greedy. We heard that term in the beginning of the game. He has a tendency sometimes to want to get greedy, to try and go for too much. Says he is greedy. Five for 11. Well, he better not get greedy. Just take the underneath route. Just like Peyton has done. You admire Peyton, do what he's doing. Toss, Rudy Johnson looking for blockers. Nobody home. Off the corner, Jason David. Hey, tip your cap to the Colts defense. Much, much maligned by everybody who has a microphone and a typewriter in North America. They've been pretty good tonight. Let's talk about the dilemma that Carson Palmer has. Here's a quote. You know Peyton's going to score. It's not if, it's when. You feel so pressed. You feel you can't punt. You think you need a touchdown, not a field goal. And sometimes you end up doing stupid things, making throws you can't make. And, Joe, that's what you're saying, that he can't do that here. Nope. But he it. feels the need to score right here. Third down, passing down. Watch Freeney, bottom of your screen. Gets chipped. Good job keeping them out. They go to the other side. In and out of the hands of Watson and almost picked off. Second time the Colts defense a three and out tonight, and they hear it from this sellout crowd. Carson Palmer gets rushed in the pocket. Nice job. Nowhere to go. That time the umpire was right in the way of where Carson Palmer wanted to throw the ball in the middle of the field and had to pull it down. The last time they went three and out, Wilkins muffed the punt and gave Cincinnati good field position. Has to make a deep run to catch this one at the 40. Runs into his own man and is brought down by Marcus Wilkins at the 43-yard line. Five and a half left and Manning and the Colts plus 11 with the ball. A lot of meaning tonight. If the Colts win, they stay alive for the number one seed. They need a lot of help. San Diego's in good shape. Colts control their own destiny for the number two seed. That's the bye, and that's one of the biggest statistical advantages going into the playoffs. 
You'd have a four way tie at eight and six go for those wild card spots. Since he and Denver would hold the tiebreakers at the moment Jacksonville and the Jets would be held and fans of the Bills and the Titans and the Steelers and the Chiefs you feel pretty good because you'd only be a game out of the wild card spot and Baltimore would become the AFC North champ. All that is true if this holds up in the last third of the game. Colts by 11 with the ball. Manning great statistical night completing passes to Dominique Rhodes first down at the 45 yard line he's completed his last six had a nine in a row stretch in the second quarter the play action just puts so much pressure on linebackers you run a play action fake the backers have to come up thinking it's a run then they see Peyton has the ball then they turn their backs and run back into coverage he winds up dumping the ball off and you it's like a lock 10 yard look at reception. those numbers oh they're 24 out of 27 and three touchdowns we have a lot of time left in this game. Dominique Rose is in because Joseph Vadai was hurting that long run before. Gets to the 43. Here's Michelle on the cold sideline. Yeah, Joseph Adai has been diagnosed with a left ankle injury. His return is probable getting a lot of attention on the sideline from the training staff. This is exactly the reason his mom hates to watch his games, hasn't attended one of his games since seventh grade. She can't stand the sight of him being hurt. She once nearly fainted after he was bit by a dog. She promises to be at the Houston game next week, but he said, I'll believe it when I see it. On the field, you got bit by a dog? No, but that almost happened at a Georgia game eight years ago. In stride, Reggie Wayne, first down. 28-yard oh. line, pick up a 15. Uga, the dog, got loose. Uga, one of the famous Uga, shots. Uga. Yeah, in the right corner between the hedges in Athens, going up at a receiver, I think, from Florida. <laughs> Don't pull me on that one, no. <laughs> I, I would say you're accurate, just like Peyton Manning. He is throwing the ball as well as I've seen him throw it. I mean, the accuracy is unbelievable. The only reason... Nobody's cat or the only reason he has the incompletes because a couple of them were dropped. So again, this is the biggest game of the year, according to their coach. After Reggie Wayne's fourth catch of the night, Rhodes. No gain as we get to three and a half here in the third. You get to a position if you're the Colts, if you're the offensive leader of the Colts, when your defense has been terrible on the ground, hasn't stopped anybody, like giving up something 594 yards in the last two games, right? So the pressure is on Manning. Manning says, I've been in this position for a number of years going back to college. I understand the territory. I hold myself accountable to be there for my teammates and to play well. Do I have to throw five touchdown passes? No, but I have to do my part. Tonight he may have to throw four. He may have to throw one more. He's certainly doing his part. But he accepts responsibility. I mean, that's the quality of leadership that he's got. Manning, Wayne, ruled incomplete. Flag down. Corey James, the coverage and the slap away. Prior to the pass, holding defense number 22. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. Jonathan Joseph. On Ricky Prohl. Yep. Just just grabbed just grabbed him ever so slightly. Boy, they're calling this tight. But he had some cloth in his hand there. Yeah, He's pulling. I mean, he, he had a little bit of a cloth. You're right. But we've seen people actually hold on for like life and not have it happen. But they are, they're consistent. They're calling it. Rhodes runs to the right. Out of bounds at the 19-yard line. In the first half, Peyton Manning threw a lot of balls under 10 yards. 25 of 28, just absolutely phenomenal. 21 completions under 10 yards. Four for four, he remains perfect. Hasn't tried to go down the field. Hasn't had to because his receivers have not made a miscue. That's, yeah, they can hang that sign there forever. That sign's gonna get yellow in time. Marvin Harrison has never had a four touchdown catch game in his career. And Matt Payton's going to take time out here with the play clock running down to three. 2.21 remaining. Well, you talk about Peyton Manning and Marvin Harrison, their great careers. 
not getting to the ultimate game, that crowning moment, the Super Bowl. Same true with uh, the coach, Tony Dungy. Since Manning and Dungy have been together, they are third in the head coach quarterback tandem of all time success. And I know that so many things go into a football team, but who do we talk about? Who do you remember forever? Who are eras defined by? The coach and the quarterback, Stabler and Madden, Super Bowl champs. McMahon and Ditka, Super Bowl champs. Everybody on that list. With a win tonight, these guys go back to the top of the best quarterback coach combo in win percentage since the merger in 1970. They're the ones that yeah, don't have but that you notice final that you're line. a fan or, or even a writer or a critic on any level. You got to get there. You may not have to win, but you've got to get there. I mean, Dungy's been here five years. Manning's been here nine. I think Bill Polian, this is his 10th year as the GM orchestrating the entire team. And people say you've got great, great talent. You've got to get to the Super Bowl. Out of the timeout from the 18. Manning to Reggie Wayne. What a throw! Touchdown, Indianapolis. Yeah, you should smile. That was some kind of throw to the back left corner. Talked about how accurate he has been all night. That all, guy's he not did smiling. Was, all he did was ratchet one up just a little bit further. Wow. This is surgical. Terrific route by Reggie. That ball's in the air long before he makes the move, and Torrey James just has nowhere to go. And who does Carson Palmer say, without question, is the best quarterback in the NFL? Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning. And he continues to prove it. And Reggie Wayne, who all the Colts hope gets the news tomorrow that he will be uh, an AFC Pro Bowler because he's had one of those uh, great kind of seasons. He is honored there. And Peyton Manning, he's always seemingly razor sharp. He's been unbelievable tonight. Uh, an outstanding quarterback rating. Ties a season high with four touchdowns. You talk about that quarterback rating that encompasses your that. percentages. Only Steve Young in NFL history has a better quarterback passer rating yeah, but how than do Peyton you, Manning. Well, is it 153.8, Mike, is the best you can be? 158.3. How is he not even closer to that? I, I don't understand Here's that. Here's what he ought to be grateful for, because if you move that decimal point two to the left, you have Rex Grossman from three weeks ago. <laughs> you got 1.4. He's got 141. Pretty darn good. Well, the teammates of Marvin Harrison and Reggie Wayne with uh, the accomplishment here tonight, both have 75 catches on the season, over 1,000 yards, both doing that for the third straight year. They are the first teammates in NFL history to get to those marks. And we talk about Marvin and Manning together, but Reggie Wayne deserves so much of a, you know, as good a number two receiver as there is in the National Football League. They looked for a number two for many years here before Reggie Wayne came in. He was a little rough and on the edges in his first year but after that he really really became an incredible contributor for Marvin Harrison and you'd have to say that a lot of Marvin's success over the last three years has been the development of Reggie on the other side complimentary receiver helps to have number 18 throwing it though doesn't it sure does. helps to have that helps to have a guy who can put it on a shoulder like that so nobody else can get it. wow from a few yards deep Glenn Holt had indecision brings it out Gets taken down at the 20-yard line. Wrapped up by Gilbert Gardner. Near Susie with more on the Bengals' offense. Well, obviously, they have a lot of work to do, and they may have to do it for a bit without their number one weapon. Chad Johnson went to the locker room. They gave him ideas for cramping. He has not yet come back. And Susie, that will uh, take away the most potent weapon on this offense, the man who leads the National Football League in receiving yards. Guy who in the last five games has five touchdowns and 765 yards. Now you don't. He's the best they've got. Now if you're the Colts, you don't have to worry about run defense. So Reggie McNeil has to come in the game at receiver. Off the edge comes Robert Mathis. Couldn't get to the quarterback. And Palmer completes it to Rudy Johnson for an 11-yard first down. Mathis, who's been the sack man this year with Freeney held in check, almost got there. Remember, they lost Willie Anderson, the right tackle earlier in the ball game so you've got Whitworth at the left tackle as a rookie and Stacy Andrews a third year guy at the right tackle Levi Jones has been out we mentioned Richie Brown has been out before so you really have three would be starters in the Cincinnati offensive line out the 32 Johnson 
Loss of three on the play. Mathis came around, and Booger McFarland, who had the fumble recovery earlier, cleaned it up. Sort of ironic how this game is going right now. Indianapolis came in here reeling on defense. They played pretty staunch on defense. Cincinnati came in here, having in the last four games held four teams to a total of 33 points. Two of those teams, New Orleans and Baltimore, very, very good teams, and they can't stop the Colts right now. It's completely flipped as to what you might have expected, say, 10 hours ago. Kenny Watson is in the game. He takes the screen out of the backfield. Regis Blockwell and Watson with room to run and a block. There goes Kenny Watson chased down from behind at the 26-yard line. Kelvin Hayden, the backup corner, comes up and gets him, but he flips the field with the big game. You know the Bengals have a lot of firepower. They can get the ball to a lot of different people. Kenny Watson's got the speed Rudy Johnson doesn't have. Big break up the field. Now, just running hard. Get it on up the field. Kelvin Hayden manages to get him down. Gain of 46 for Watson, his longest on the season. Rudy Johnson takes over. Runs it hard a yard shy of the first down as the third quarter comes to an end. Down 18, Palmer and the Bengals got to punch it in as we head off to the fourth quarter. So again, the significance here, San Diego has won its division. Indianapolis has won its. If this score holds up and Cincinnati loses, Baltimore will be champions of the North. The Patriots still have the Jets alive within the division. There are the Bengals at 8-5, and five, and as we've been saying all along, if the Bengals do not rally from down 18 here in Indianapolis, then all those teams sitting at 7-7 seven and seven are within one of the wild card spot with two to go. Got a few of them playing one another, too, in the next couple of weeks. Including Cincinnati and Denver in a big game on Sunday. Fourth quarter begins with second and one for the Bengals. And Rudy Johnson fighting to get the first yard. First down yard, I should say, uh, over the back of Rob Morris, who moves back into the starting lineup here tonight. You know, Mike, now you start to get into, even though it's the beginning of the fourth quarter, figure a team gets three possessions a quarter. Well, the Bengals are down by 18 points. It's, they've got to get going. They need to get some points on the board in a hurry. They can't be running the football anymore. Again, Chad Johnson in the locker room getting an IV, so Chris Henry is the receiver at the bottom of your screen. Push Manzada at the top, and they run Rudy Johnson. Look at all the blue shirts. A half dozen surround the ball carrier, and there's that pride in pursuit that we have seen from this Indy defense tonight. That is not the personality of the Cincinnati Bengals, to, to just line up and think that you're going to pound the football. They yeah, have, but, but their best receiver is getting an IV. Doesn't I mean, matter. He's not out there. They've he's got, their number one guy. You heard Carson Palmer say the other day, we had to realize that Chad Johnson is our go-to guy, and we got to get him the ball. Doesn't that change what they can do here? Still have to throw the ball. T.J. Hushmanzada, get the ball to Chris Henry. Two receivers to the top. Carson comes to the right. The big hit on Jeremy Johnson, the fullback, as Morris and Harper make the play. Very active night for Rob Morris as Chad Johnson emerges after getting that IV that Susie told us about. Having Rob Morris, number 94, in the lineup, he wasn't, you know, played middle linebacker for him for a number of years. Gary Brackett took over, and just getting him back in the lineup gives him a more physical presence in the front seven. Five defensive backs for the Colts. Four receivers for the Bengals. Palmer to the end zone for Hushmanzada. Broken up. Fourth down coming up. Here's the Extra read again. Here's the decision that Marvin Lewis has to make, and he has. You kick the field goal here. You got to hope your defense can stop him. It's just outstanding play. Oh, you love it. Dexter Reed, young kid. Basically the fifth safety. Bob Sanders is out. Mike Doss is gone. Bethay is gone. I mean, they're, they're really thin. Marlon Jackson out. It's been the story of the night. Cincinnati needing to settle for field goals. And this is a 28-yard attempt from Graham. 
27 28 and 30 tells you they've gotten in the red zone but they haven't gotten the touchdowns and that's the difference right now so a two score game Chad Johnson hopes he and Carson can get the ball back he just missed which was out of there Indianapolis Indiana 31 16 after the Cincinnati field goal and Manning and Marvin who hope to hang a banner that says AFC champs Super Bowl champs at the top of the RCA Dome or the new building the Lucas Oil Stadium going up next door get back to work after the Wilkins kickoff return Terrence is tackled shy of the 20 yard line well covered by Tony Stewart the backup tight end. This era of Colts football defined by the passing game. Peyton Manning, Marvin Harris hooking up three times tonight. Reggie Wayne on the most recent drive. And these two receivers, who will be one of the best tandems when the record books are uh, settled after their career, have done it tonight. 31 for the Colts, 16 for the Bengals. Indy was stopped on a fourth and one at the start of this half. It's the only drive they haven't scored on tonight. Dominique Rhodes is in because Joseph Adai is out. Loss of a couple, and here's Susie Colbert. Well, Mike, with the Bengals down, defensive coordinator Chuck Bresnahan with an emotional plea to every member of his defense. He went to every guy and said the same thing. Don't give up the big play. Settle down. Don't give up the big play. Settle down, and we can still win this. They believe they're still in this game. And Bresnahan knows this building well. Suze was the linebacker coach here in 96 and 97. Well respected around the league. Second down and Manning's throw is boy near disaster interception as John Thornton had a chance to get his hands on one and really changed the complexion of this game. That would have been the turnover that Cincinnati needed. They would have needed a touchdown but that would have been the turnover. Here's a little middle screen they try and run. Here comes a twist upside. Bounces in the air and up. It's in its hands. It's in his hands. Drop it. John Thornton had a shot yeah. at it. Stops a string of eight straight completions. Again, Rhodes is in there as a die walked off after a long run earlier and has walked back to the locker room. Third and 11, massive play for the Bengal defense. And Manning hit as he throws through the hands of Harrison and incomplete. It was Domata Peko, the rookie out of Michigan State, with the pressure. Harrison didn't hang on, and the Colts are three and out for the first time tonight. A little bit of a knuckleball coming out of Peyton. Here comes the pressure inside, throws it. it just goes through, looks like it just goes through Marvin's hand. He's right there. Oh, just a hair behind him. The ball was knuckling on him, and he couldn't quite get a handle on it. Still, you got to expect Marvin Harrison to make that kick. First punt of the night for Hunter Smith. Pressure comes in. 43-yard kick. Kiwan Ratliff got it at the 39. Got a block. Made a man miss. Down to the 48. And momentum. You can always sense it in a the game. There's a three and out. Here's a chance after a net of 34. Good field position for Johnson Palmer in the Bengals offense. So the Bengals fans who made the 112-mile uh, drive down I-74 have been silenced somewhat tonight, but now they have reason to hope. Good field position. Carson Palmer and the Bengals offense trying to do something they haven't done all year. When they've trailed by more than one possession, down eight or more, they haven't come back to win. It's happened four games this year. So they're really trying to find a way to come up with a huge win, and they have a great opportunity to make it a one-score game on this drive. They'll stick with the run. Rudy Johnson being patient. Only a gain of two. Here's Michelle Tafoya. Well, Marvin Harrison is sitting on the bench in a little bit of pain right now. The left hand, and you saw the ball go right through his hands on that last throw from Peyton Manning. They put tape around three of his fingers, the middle, the ring, and the pinky finger. But in a lot of pain with that left hand, he's put the glove back on. He's being attended to by the trainer. But if that's bothersome, that could be big in this game. That looks like a pulling out a dislocation had that happen. Not fun. Second and ten. Palmer pressured. Incomplete pass. Oh, or a fumble. Let's see. Incomplete pass. Incomplete pass. The ruling on the field. It was Robert Mathis who came off the edge. And without those offensive tackles there, no Willie Anderson. In comes the charging Mathis. He just went right around the speed of these ends is what they can't deal with. He just, he just, it's not even close. 
This is what the defense was built for here, a small, fast defense. When you're up by 15 and you know the other team has to throw all the time, then you can get to the quarterback. Challenge flag thrown by the Colts. Palmer heading off the sideline here. And uh, Anthony Wright starting to throw a ball and warm up as a healthy Chad as he gets thrown over there. Is that the empty hand coming through will be the uh, question that Gene Steratore will look at. Indianapolis under the hood. is challenging the ruling on the field of an incomplete forward pass. So there's the Colts challenge. They'll step out as they look at it. Tony Dungy and the Colts have challenged hoping that they could get this call to fumble with a Colts recovery however because this is a pass not a runner down by contact rule the Colts are not going to get the ball in this situation first let's go back to that Joe do you think that was a incomplete forward pass yes the fact that his arm went forward his pinky is what pushes it forward but it doesn't matter <laughs> I mean, and, and you can see where the ball goes off to I the agree. right and all you have to have is a little bit of your hand on it with the arm going forward should be an incomplete pass what the there it is. The hand's coming forward. The finger pushes it forward. It should be, in looking at those pictures, ruled an incomplete pass. The ball went forward. His arm was coming forward. Therefore, in all likelihood, it should be an incomplete pass. When the rule was changed this year for down by contact, it was to apply After to a review, ball carrier. Ruling on the field stands. It is an incomplete forward pass. That's a fairly simple one to call. There wasn't any mystery in that one. So the Colts lose a timeout, and they have challenged twice, and both were not successful with us. The Colts are void of challenges here with 11 and a half to go, and we have a big third and 10 ahead. Is this four down territory? That's the thing you have to ask with 11 and a half minutes to go. Chad Johnson back in the game. Palmer looking that way, throwing that way. Didn't catch it. Nick Harper was there. I don't know if he got a finger on it or not. But Johnson was back getting an IV for cramps. Couldn't come up with it there. And the Colts defense one more time getting the job done. Uh, this is, I think, Chad Johnson helping the Colts defense out, Mike. Mm -hmm. He gets up inside, gets away from Nick Harper. Balls in the air. Uh, I can't quite tell whether Harper got a pinky on it or not. I'm big, I'm big on pinkies tonight. <laughs> Ball's thrown a little bit behind him, and Chad can't quite hang on to it. So they will punt and hope the defense can help them out. Kyle Larson will try to down the Colts inside the 20 or better. Wilkins, fair catch signal, and made at the 10. Here's Susan Colbert. Well, that Chad drop, reminiscent of another drop. He calls it the turning point of his career. It came right here in the RCA Dome, October of 2002. 23 seconds to go against the Colts. Tra Chad drop, possible game-tying TD. Quarterback John Kitna told him at the time, you can let your career spiral down or you can send it up. Chad decided at that moment he would never be the person responsible for a loss. He called it the turning point. But in times like tonight, when the pressure is on, sometimes you just can't help it. Such different days, Susie. That was the fifth loss to start the season. They opened 0-7, finished 2-14. Dick LeBeau was fired. Marvin Lewis came in, two eight-win seasons, 11, and then last year winning the AFC North. Wilmotop Paco with a tackle of Dominique Rhodes on that first down carry. It's important that the Colts don't go into a shell and try and eat time up. Peyton Manning has to continue to judiciously throw the ball down the field, pick it up, make sure that the Bengals, their offense is seated on the sidelines. Pushman, Zada, Johnson, Rudy Johnson, let them sit and watch. But Peyton has to throw the football. No huddle and gun. Still milk the clock. Manning to Reggie Wayne, who got hit hard at the 15-yard line by Dexter Jackson. Joe, we talked about uh, that play with Nick Harper. Chad Johnson and Nick Harper. Was it a finger by Nick Harper? Yep. Here's your answer. I think it's a pinky. Yep. yep. There's your answer. Just got just tipped. Carson threw it a little bit behind him and 
Chad couldn't make the play. Certainly not a drop at that point. I get sand on it. The Cincinnati offense hasn't been in sync all night. Better than missing Chad Johnson for almost a quarter. Even so. when he was in there, they weren't in sync. Manning, Harrison, able to catch it and get the first down at the 26-yard line. That finger really bothering him. Michelle told us taped up in pain, and he is uh, slow to scrape himself off the turf after his eighth catch. Well, every one of those catches is going to hurt, too. That's the one That's the one that he hurt. The same route is the one he hurt it on. But he, he'll use his body. He's not going to reach out with his hands into his body. And that's atypical. He is such a hands catcher and doesn't let it get into that danger spot for receiver's body. But he's just trying to gut through it here at a big game. And also flexing that wrist after that one as well. To the 21 roads. Busting into the secondary and picking up a first down with a gain of 17. So this becomes a question then, Joe. If Marvin Harrison is out there in obvious pain, not just his fingers, but now maybe his wrist as well, do you want him out there? I mean, if you're Peyton Manning, do you want him out there at that point? Yes. Well, being out there allowed him to get to 80 receptions for the eighth consecutive year. That ties an NFL record with the incomparable Jerry Rice, although we keep making comparisons. Which he says you can't to make. To Harrison with Rice. He's saying he can't make it. But he's what? getting there. You take the in off soon and it'll be comparable. Still got a ways to go and rings to put on those fingers. Rhodes, good job by the offensive line, giving him a convoy to take it into Bengals territory and a first down pickup of 16 yards. How about Ryan Olilja coming down to lead the charge of blockers? A lot of times when you see a running back get to the outside and nobody's there, it's because the wide receivers do an excellent job of blocking. But there's nobody home. He's 10 yards downfield, and the reason why is because Reggie Wayne is out front, number 87. Just all you need to do is get in front of somebody. He's not allowing Torrey James to get in and make the play. More and more it begins to look like a convincing win for Indianapolis, which needed it desperately going into this game. Rhodes from the 45, tackled by Justin Smith, gained it two yards. And guys, when we visited with uh, Smith yesterday, the veteran out of Missouri, former first round pick, he told us of the one of a kind experience of what it's like to play against Peyton Manning and the Colts when Peyton is pointing and kneeling and fake signals and all that stuff. He said, hey, you're just out there and you are just burning in your legs because it's snap after snap and you're in your stance and you don't know if it's going to be the hard count or if they're going to play it out. And the fatigue for a defensive lineman is so different in a Manning game when you get in that stance right there. And this is their 61st snap tonight. A throw to Reggie Wayne. Another first down at the 23 yard line. To that specific point that Justin Smith talked about, the fatigue in your legs. In baseball, if you feel the pitcher is fooling with you, you walk out. You're at the batter's box. You walk out. You have you have an equal opportunity. You can't do that in football because at any time Manning can look at you. If you stand up, takes, Manning can run the play right at you. If I was a you know, quarterback, you can't do it. If I was a quarterback and saw a defensive end want to step out of the Just box, he can't. you're right. That's right where I'd go. They can step out as far as he wants. Right. So you have to stay there and, and, and take the burn in your legs and hope they pay you a lot of money for that. Now Peyton Manning will run the ball. After the 27th first down of the night, what a play diving in by Jonathan Finene for the second time tonight as he knocks down Rhodes. Oh, Joseph Adai is not in the lineup. It's been all Rhodes. Michelle, have an update for us? Yeah, well, the Colts' official word on Adai continues to be that he's probable. However, he is on the bench with his right shoe off, an ice pack on that foot and ankle. They're missing his eight carries for 50 yards that he had, two catches for 29 yards. Again, they're saying he's probable. Doesn't look probable he's coming back in, Mike. No, it's probably not would be the answer there from the visual, Michelle. You're right. They play Houston next week, close with Miami here in the RCA Dome to wrap up this season. Manning's pass is incomplete. You know, it, we get so used to the Colts clinching something early on and 
you know the last couple of weeks what they're playing for they still have the opportunity to be the number two seed in the AFC if they win 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 and that is huge they have that but 24 hours ago people in this city and people around the country were saying it's almost a failure of the Colts they needed to win this game because they lost three out of four people forgot that they had already won 10 it was like Chicago a few weeks ago when they had won 10 and people said the sky is falling because Rex Grossman can't complete a pass Rex Grossman is Lovey's quarterback, by the way. Just, uh, yeah. I don't know if you've heard that in a week. <laughs> Third and 13. Manning behind Ricky Prohl and incomplete as Prohl had the opportunity to get Pey another catch for a touchdown from the quarterback. Michael Payton knows he had him yeah. running wide open in the middle of the field. Now, You've got Ricky Paul doing it's not Brandon Stokely does Brandon Stokely get there and sit down Say Ricky Ricky's just not as comfortable in this offense Stokely may slow down a little bit like we saw Marvin Harrison do in the first half It's something they're gonna have to get more comfortable with as they move towards the playoffs Pro is trying to catch a touchdown from his 17th different quarterback more than any guy going right now in the league Vinatieri from 44 Gives the Colts 34. 34 16 for Manning and the Colts. Well, uh, so many people around the country read the Sunday New York Times. And this was the front page of the sports section of the Sunday Times yesterday about the trouble with the Bengals, the multiple arrests that have happened in the last calendar year to the Cincinnati team. Marvin Lewis, the head coach, is well respected around the league, saying, in this case, we earned it. We have to rise above it. And they've earned it because of a series of transgressions, really, over the last calendar year. We talk about Chris Henry, their wide receiver, who has been arrested four different times. And Lewis is the one who's been. Uh, the face who has to answer for it's a very different situation because if somebody at any other business gets in trouble the CEO doesn't go on the front page of the newspaper and have to answer for it but that's part of what happens when you're a head coach in the National Football League and a lot of the responsibility and the much bigger story of the all of these arrests with the Bengals where is it leading and what's the situation well I mean I, I think it's very broad based really in, in the sense that we see athletes behaving badly all over the place some off the field some on the field Terrell Owens recently spits at somebody Tank Johnson not on this not on the Cincinnati team Chicago There's six you know six guns found in his house then you have the basketball brawl just the other day it's not isolated to Cincinnati where Cincinnati goes under the spotlight though it's eight guys in one year there's a labor force of 53 people and eight of them have been arrested and you have the commissioner Roger Goodell publicly saying what can we do to help you which is a shot across the bow which is saying look we can't have this anymore this looks very bad each individual case may not stand up to scrutiny but the totality of eight out of a 53 man team seems overwhelming does it not you saw Henry who's been suspended two games already for his transgressions four different arrests Delta O'Neill did not start today they did not play last week after his arrest for a DUI on the weekend before the last game. There's a return to the 20-yard line with a tackle for Rocky Boy. I mean, we spoke to so many of the parties involved. Marvin Lewis talking with us yesterday about what he has to deal with. And to a man, the Bengals will tell you, and you know it from Marvin Lewis, they've done everything possible. And even at the top with Mike Brown and the, the president of this team, the ownership, they give the players an opportunity. If you get in trouble with too much drinking don't get behind a wheel there's a limo service a limo service yes. call call yes. and get a cab you can afford it with your salary but we're also going to try to help you Marvin Lewis has set out the rules for this team to abide by and when O'Neill was the latest person to break the law and be arrested he was sat down for a game and Cincinnati tried to take it into its own hands Bengals down 18 three scores needed 520 left Nearly intercepted, deflected by Johnson. On that point, I mean, Marvin Lewis has changed a little bit uh, from where he was during the exhibition season, the sort of staunch defender of everything that was going on, to, to this point now. Pocket, illegal contact, defense number 42. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. He went through all the people chapter and verse who'd been arrested, and he said on a couple of them, that's on me. I made a mistake here in terms of drafting or signing somebody. He said, I would never go down this road because I want to coach football. If I can help it, I won't go down this road. There's a lot of good football players. It's important to get the right ones. That is an admission that the character issue has hurt him as a coach with this particular team. On the other hand, they come in here with four straight victories. 
You know, so they haven't reached the tipping point as a team yet. From the 25, pass is caught by Reggie Kelly. He has a first down. I did speak with Roger Goodell, the commissioner of the National Football League, earlier this week. A week ago today, he reached out to Mike Brown, the Bengals president, to offer the support of the NFL and the NFL Players Association in addressing these issues. It was perceived through an interview that Roger did that he was interjecting himself into the Bengals situation. In fact, he called to say, how can we as a league help Marvin Lewis, Mike Brown, and the Bengals? So this doesn't become a continued problem. Passer Hushmanzada incomplete. And Roger visited all the NFL teams as he became the commissioner. And he was in Cincinnati on September 20th. And just a few days later, five days later, Odell Thurman, terrific rookie linebacker on this team last year, had a second arrest. And it led to a year-long suspension. So the message has been right in front of the Bengals players from the head man of the NFL. And they still didn't get it. But again, I think this is, you know, this exists in all sports. We see this time and time again. The NBA in particular is trying to crack down heavily because the NBA believes it has an, an image problem with what goes on with these brawls and other sorts of arrests. Second and ten passes knocked down and complete. I think Marvin Lewis put it as well as anybody. He said the only way that you can effectively try and do something with the players is take away their stage. Mm -hmm. He did that with Delph O'Neal last week. He did it basically in the first half with Delph O'Neal this week. If players don't have a forum to become stars and think that they have power and can do what they want, then the likelihood of them doing it should be less. I say should be less. Only time will tell if that will work. Penny Watson's the back. Tony Stewart's in motion. This is third and ten. The twisting Colts get free knee to force another fumble. And we'll see if Indianapolis comes up with it. Be another sack for Dwight. A second forced fumble on the night. He's had his best game of the year. Pushing and shoving around the pile. Still no indication as to which team is recovered. It's just the pressure that Carson Palmer has gotten all night. Andrew Whitworth has got an education against the quickest of the defensive ends in football. Bengal ball fourth down. Third sack for the Colts. Two for Freeney had two and a half coming into tonight. Just to, to the point that you made before Joe about taking away the stage. That's what you see in the NBA with these big suspensions that were issued today for fighting. Fighting is not getting arrested. It's a different deal like grant that. Carson Palmer continuing to struggle, never ever comfortable, whether it's on the right side where Stacey Andrews is playing the tackle position or Andrew Whitworth was playing, it didn't matter. Wilkins, Fields at the 25, flag down as he's down at the 34-yard line. We'll check the flag. Freeney was uh, out there on special teams as the safe team was out just in case the Bengals try to fake down 18. Freeney is so incredible. Yes. I mean, he yes. is so quick off the ball. And, and what, ama what amazed me a little bit is Cincinnati decided on three different Jordan occasions. Return. Illegal block in the back. Number 42 of the return team. 10-yard penalty. First down, Indianapolis. They decided on three different occasions they weren't going to chip them. They weren't going to put a tight end over there. They were going to let Whitworth, Whitworth block them. And all three times, he just ate them for lunch. Mm -hmm. Just know, ate them for lunch. And yet he came in here with two and a half sacks. I know. And yesterday said, but well, it doesn't even matter. What? Sacks don't even matter. Because I'm not getting the opportunity because everybody's running at us. And this is exactly what happened. When the opportunity was presented where Cincinnati had to throw, Dwight Freeney rose to the occasion and, and shown. I'm, I'm not trying to be critical of coaches here. But does it not seem to you that Indianapolis seems much better prepared for this game tonight? No, I think Cincinnati, right from the get-go, made a critical mistake. They tried to run the football. They got out of their game. That is not who they are. Too many stars on the, on the perimeter. First down run with Rhodes. He gets two. With the Colts' apparent victory here tonight, here's what the situation will be with the wild card. Denver and Cincinnati would still, if you broke out the tiebreakers now, they would be the top two teams in this wild card chase. But they play each other next week, so somebody's coming back to eight and seven. The opportunity for Jacksonville, the Jets on Monday Night Football against Miami on Christmas night. Huge. And Buffalo, Pittsburgh, Tennessee, and Kansas City, your teams. How about if the Steelers got in? Yeah, well, I was would that say, be something? Three of those four teams were done three weeks ago. These late season surges right back in it. Or late season collapses. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, Jacksonville. Jacksonville had everything right in front of them. They give up three scores defensively and wind up losing a ballgame. Timeout here. They give you two things quick. Jacksonville will control its own destiny 
with a Colts win here tonight thanks in large part to those eye popping numbers from Peyton Manning and we're all focused on the AFC guys I want to give you one NFC wild card note it has been reported many places that the Giants are in control of their own destiny in the NFC Giants fans I have bad news that's not the case there, there is a scenario where the Giants could win their last two games coming up here against New Orleans and Washington on the road and not get in the playoffs. And just to give it to you quick Atlanta would have to win twice Philly beat Dallas and Dallas beat Detroit because of the tiebreakers it would happen that Atlanta and Philadelphia would be the teams to go so there is a scenario where the Giants go win win but don't get in any of those three Mike any like if Dallas beats let's say Detroit does that mean the Giants are out or Dallas would have it, all those things have to happen all Giants win twice okay. Can't Atlanta wins questions. twice <laughs> Philly beat Dallas on Christmas afternoon right. Dallas beat Detroit so you have to have the trifecta that, that's uh, the scenario for Peyton's brother Eli Peyton hands off here to Dominic Rhodes who's tackled Peyton, you know, we talk about Peyton's having a great great night and every time you see him as he walks off it looks like he's loose I mean he doesn't ever seem happy and he's having a great night he's such a perfectionist you know, guys you talk about Peyton and uh, I was mentioning Eli and the Giants had a great chance to visit with Archie Manning this afternoon just did just one of the all time great people love being around Archie and he was telling me and you think back the Giants great start the Colts getting off to the undefeated start New Orleans going so well the three teams that matter the most to Archie and his wife Olivia life was good and, and Archie you know the veteran NFL guy he's been around seen it all said you know does necessarily mean the second half of the season is going to be easy and this has been a very rough uh, stretch here for the Manning brothers and uh, Peyton pulling the Colts out of this one here tonight and Eli will have the opportunity with the Giants here as they take on New Orleans at home on Sunday New Orleans is another team they had Washington at home Washington had struggled all year they lose that ball game bring everybody into the mix. Hunter Smith pressured a nice job to get it away and a beautiful kick as well. Kiwan Ratliff fair catching it at the 25 yard line. Well, of course uh, the entire NFL throughout the week saddened and tributing at uh, each game the passing of Lamar Hunt at age 74 founder of the AFL of course founder and owner of the Dallas Texans moved to Kansas City named the Chiefs pro football Hall of Famer came up with the term Super Bowl just one of the great sportsmen of all time and it's you watch so many games over the week and just you realize how many lives were touched in the National Football League by Lamar Hunt indirectly and directly and that's one of them Tony Dungy who had uh, his opportunity to be in Kansas City as an assistant coach and had wonderful warm work it's about Lamar Hunt certainly touched mine Mike many years ago in Tokyo I was invited to a Kansas City Chief birthday party for Lamar Hunt and we stayed in touch all the years matter of fact one year I forgot to send him a birthday card and he reminded me when he did a game in Kansas City he came up and said I didn't get a birthday card from you this year I said well I'm sorry jokingly he said no I'm serious I didn't get a birthday card from you I said I'm terribly sorry had an opportunity his birthday was August 2nd had an opportunity to talk to him shortly after that this year what an incredible incredible man he was. Kenny watching a run a throw here is caught by Hushman Zada for the first down. It seemed to me that, that the two people most responsible for forcing the merger among the founders of the American Football League who brought them into the National Football League were Lamar Hunt with, with his steadiness and his vision and his persistence and, money. and Al Davis and his money and Al Davis who you know stirred the pot in such a terrific way and at the result you have is the NFL which is the incomparable league in sports in America clearly screen for Watson to the 40 penalty marker down offsides on the Colts you know guys 30 players who either starred or started in the American Football League that Hunt got going are in the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton so is he yeah. yes and so is he and so is Al offside defense number 91 five yard penalty we play first down. And Nick Lowry, who was a longtime very successful kicker for the Chiefs, was uh, recollecting during the week about Lamar Hunt. And he said that Lamar Hunt, uh, and he had known this from knowing Hunt and knowing some of the players, because of the AFL, how many opportunities it gave other players, including many African American players, to get in to professional football. And that was such a significant part of the fabric of the league as they eventually got to 1970 in the merger point. And here we see tonight two coaches these high profile teams that are uh, getting in great position for a playoff run and two African-American coaches and it almost doesn't become a story as it happens more and more around the National Football League and 
Now you can certainly trace some of that to Lamar Hunt's vision. Second and a couple as we approach the two-minute warning. And for the life of me, I don't know why the Bengals are running or throwing screens, but they are. And we've arrived at the two-minute warning in Indianapolis, where the Colts and Peyton got well. I think. He used other words. Yeah. That were beeped. Well, watch Sports Center, you'll find out. Palmer down the middle for Chad Johnson. They could not bring it in. It's incomplete. The Cincinnati Bengals never got into the flow of this game. You know, coming out and running the football and saying, well, you know, the Colts have given up so many yards. You forget who's on the other sideline. You forget that Peyton Manning is not going to have 10 games of 17 points or less. I mean, yeah, they had four of the last five, but you can't hold him down. Their de the Colt defense did a terrific job. Look at that. I mean, all the rush yards allowed. I mean, you know, the person bringing you room service knew that they gave up 375 rushing. Buck 12 tonight. And most of that was in the first half. 99 yards in the first half. Yes. Palmer to Hushman Zada. Looking for the sideline. TJ gets the yards and gets there. At the 38-yard line with a buck 44 to go. Bengals obviously out of timeouts. They used them on the last drop. So, Joe, you think there was a design flaw in the game plan by Cincinnati? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't agree with the way they attacked this defense. I felt like they came out and sort of played to the weakness of the Colts instead of to their own strength, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is spread it out, throw the football, be aggressive. They huddled early. Not necessarily what they do. I'm, they've used it sporadically, but not as a steady diet. They seem to do that early. And those couple things set them out of their rhythm. Hey, but I wouldn't take anything away from the Colt defense. They played terrific. First and ten, Bengals still interested in scoring points here. Freedy with another forced fumble and sack. Third time tonight. This one recovered by Kenny Watson, who keeps the play alive. And it's a loss of six yards. And, Joe, I was talking about why are they running the ball and why know. are they throwing screens. And I told you, because their offensive line cannot block the Indianapolis Colt defensive line. I mean, it, you, somebody's got to block them. With tight end releases, you still have to get some type of a hand, a body, someone, something on Dwight Freeney. He is so quick off the line. And they just absolutely lightning fast. And Robert Mathis on the other side, he's only about 245. He's the same way. Ball coming back to the sack point. Last two minutes of the game, clock running and advancing a fumble. For Dwight Freeney, who had two and a half sacks coming into this game tonight for the season, he has three sacks and three forced fumbles. And there you go, the shovel pass to Kenny Watson. Falls at the 42-yard line. Before we run out of time, there's something to be said about this man, Peyton Manning, and everybody wonders when and if he will get to a Super Bowl. He talked the other day. He said, we have a core group around here that got this place turned around over the last five or six years. This is a winning program. This is not a circled win anymore, but we need to finish it, and there's only one way to do that, and Joey said that's win a championship. They know they're going to the playoffs, but Peyton Manning is going to be judged ultimately. Can you get to a championship? Can you win a championship? That's the way all quarterbacks are judged. I mean, we saw those statistics, or we saw the, the comparisons between the quarterback and the coach, Jim McMahon, Mike Ditka. Everybody had a number under Super Bowl wins on the other side, except Peyton and Tony Dungy. And I know it would be incomplete for Peyton if he got to that stage of his career where it was over and he didn't have a chance. Fourth and two. First down picked up by Hushman Zada. They're out of timeouts. He gets to the sideline there at the 29-yard line. Now you have to throw do you think in the end zone. Do you think they're good enough this year? Now, now that you've seen their defense perform better than they have in a month, I'm sure, do you think they're good enough this year to go to the Super Bowl? No, I don't. I, I, one game for their defense doesn't prove anything to me. It's this, this issue started with them with the first game against the Giants. So, you know, to see what they did tonight, and they're home here, which means that, judging on records, they might wind up having to travel places, and it'll be tougher, like San Diego and they, Baltimore. They still control their destiny for the number two seed by this win tonight. So they do have a chance for the bye and the one guaranteed home playoff game. Palmer throwing for Johnson incomplete. A couple of seconds left here. Let me just tell you that with this win, what will happen? The Ravens and Brian Billick will become the champions of the AFC North. 
the Colts will remain alive for the number one seed in the AFC but they need a lot of help San Diego's in the best spot there Indianapolis will still control its own destiny for the two seed with those last couple of games that they have against Houston and Miami and as mentioned we have a four way tie at eight and six four way tie at seven and seven in the wild card chase which by the way I believe it was week two or three someone in this booth said that the Baltimore Ravens would win that division there you go I suppose that was you yeah good guess the game's final play will be a you run for a Watson. I'm one for two. Watson gets the first down, doesn't get the touchdown. This game ends as Peyton Manning, for the 15th time in his career, throws four touchdown passes. Only Marino, Favre, and Unitas have done that more often. And Tony Dungy beats Marvin Lewis 34 16. Stay tuned for Sports Center. John Butchergrass, Steve Levy, the GMC, Monday Night Football post game report. Sports Center's college football playoffs. The big suspension for Carmelo Anthony. Chris Berman and company settling in in the end zone to our left, and they'll have the complete post-game reaction. We will see you Christmas night from Miami. And the Jets, like the Bills and the Titans and the Steelers and the Chiefs and the Jaguars and the Broncos, were helped out by the Colts tonight. With Susie Culver, Michelle Tafoya, Joe Theismann, Tony Kornheiser, and all the great women and men on our Monday Night Football team, Mike Tirico. Good night from Indianapolis. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Colts 34, Bengals 16, Sports Center in seconds.